All right, you guys. My dog just farted. That was surprising. Okay. Um, so, by my dog just farted, I mean she farted. Baby, look at the camera. You're so cute. Okay, so, this is an old pair of jeans. In fact, I have quite a lot of old pairs of jeans. They don't fit. I can't pull them up past my thighs. So, I decided this, the oldest worn out pair, I was going to try to make a haversack. Now, there's a few good things and a few bad things about trying to make a haversack out of this. I saw a video, um, on a tutorial on how to make a haversack. The only thing is he used a, um, basically a sheet of cotton, uh, I forgot what they call it. Cots, some sort of cotton cloth, basically. Um, and this is cotton, 100% cotton. Uh, and let's face it, once we get this unseamed here, it's going to be a nice, um, nice big piece to work with. Uh, that's one of the good things, is that I can, you know, have a, still have enough stuff to work with, still have enough material to work with. The bad thing is it's not a sheet of cotton. So I'm going to have to unseam everything uh, and see what I can do. Another good thing is that it already comes with pockets. So I can use some parts of it for the outside for pockets. If we flip it around in the front, around the waist, inside of here we have elastic. That can be used for a drawstring. Over here we have a zipper and a button. I don't quite possibly know what the zipper would be for, but a button would make a good flap. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is there's a zipper right there, so uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, there's more pockets over here, a smaller pocket here, um, and another pocket right there. Of course, we have the butt pockets too. Uh, this is an old torn up piece of jean, or old torn up jeans. So we do have holes in the cuffs from place to place, if you look here. Um, but nothing we cannot uh, work around. Uh, I'm not, I don't do a lot of sewing, and I'm not a seamstress, or whatever you call them. Uh, however, my grandmother uh, makes stuff like that all the time. She does repairs around the house uh, with a needle and thread. She just doesn't do it by hand. She has a sewing machine to do it, which makes it a lot faster. You can use different stitches without having to uh, take a long time by hand sewing it. So cute. Okay, can you back off, please? Rough. Is that all you're gonna say? Oh. Hey, how about how about you move? No, stop it. Stop. She's like, pet me. Alright, stop it. Stop. Okay, so um luckily because my grandmother does sewing, I learned some stuff by how to sew by hand. Will you stop hitting the camera? I swear. Why do you want, she, for some reason, the only time that she wants a lot of attention is whenever I'm filming. I don't know why. I can do any, I can do anything and everything else. And she'll want, you know, she doesn't mind um, whether she gets a lot of attention or not. But once I turn on this camera, once I start filming for two seconds, she, for some reason, wants to be belly rubbed and patted. And her neck scratched and massaged on the shoulders like that. She's like, yes, massage me more. Uh, and she likes to lick and bite my hand, but not like bite bite, just like love bite, I guess you call them. And for some reason, she's one of those dogs that uses her hands. She doesn't have paws. You might think these are paws, but then whenever you do this, 
she tries to grab your hand and then she chew love bites it and licks it for some reason. Now get off my old jeans. Okay, so first thing we're going to figure out is uh, how much, get back, how wide this pant leg would be um, un, you know, unseamed. So the first thing we're going to do is measure uh, around uh, with a sort of measuring tape. I'll be right back with you with those measurements. Okay, so I measured it with this little metal kind of a measuring tape. Makes really neat noises. I got this from the weight scale that I had uh, that I kind of broke and then repaired uh, because I was trying to figure out how much draw weight this bow is. It's not a, it's not strung up yet. I don't keep my bows strung except for maybe this one because I can't really unstring that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which it's okay for to leave your compound bows strong because yeah, it's it's fine But bows like this You know recurve and long bows. It's not so good to leave them string strung up uh, Don't ask me why that's a whole different subject. I would explain in another video, but I'm not going to right now so from cuff the cuff is around 19 inches around um, by around I mean and if you trace from here, go all the way around and back to there, it's 19 inches, which is how um, how wide it would be from here to there, I believe. Um, and then over here, it's uh, 21, tw 20 and a half inches. Uh, so there's not a whole lot of difference between there. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and unseam everything. I'll be right back with you with a tool that can do that really easily and really quickly. So we have some tools here that will help us. Uh, first, because I couldn't find those little uh, things that you unseam things with, uh, uh, first thing is these little tiny sewing uh, scissors. Don't worry, I have thread over there. Uh, and it's cotton thread. Unfortunately, I have it in green and red. That's it. Uh, because for arrow fletchings, tr traditional arrow stuff. Anyway, <clears throat> and then over here we have a couple of what my uh, grandmother and my whole family call uh, bobby pins, which are for sewing. Then we have a wide... I uh, needle <coughs> over here are these scissors for cutting the material these are from Cutco and Cutco makes terrific excellent awesome uh, cutlery I didn't go in there so I don't know what you talking about girl and my dog is on the jeans okay so first we're gonna unseam this Okay, doggy, move. If you don't want to get cut, move. Oh, you want to get cut? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> okay, get back. Back. Don't want to cut you. So, because it's on the inside, I have a feeling that we might have to turn it inside out here for a second. It's back. No. Okay, so we have the whole thing inside out, and these linen pockets we might not use. Seriously, dog. Okay, so we're basically just going to cut all these little threads. You don't need to cut all of them, we're just going to cut some of them. Show you what I mean. Wedge the scissors into a thread, cut it. Okay. 
Okay. And wedge some scissors into the thread. Like that. One of the blades needs to go inside that thread. And then you cut it. And you pull on that thread. A little loose thread here. Still another thread right there. Just cut that. And you pull on that. Should come undone. Again, there's another thread. There we go. Okay. So. There we go. And then cut it where you want it to stop. Don't know why it's not cutting. There. Okay. So now that we have this upper part, we're just gonna pull the thread over here and finish off the lower part. Finish him. There we go. All right. It's kind of hard to use your nails. I can do that too, small dog. I can do that too. <laughs> Don't know why there's issues with this. There really shouldn't be much of an issue. Anyway, so gonna basically pull the thread all the way out to the cuff show you what that looks like so you're probably asking the questions all right smart one genius whatever you want to call me you uh, I've I've pulled out the threads now what do I do it's actually really simple I'm gonna show you take two of these pieces which were like this and you pull on either side I'm just going to show you that. Maybe back off. Back off. Back off! No, sit. Lay down. Stay. Okay. Alright, so... Now that you have that, you take one end, like that, and you pull. You just do this all the way down the pant leg. Until you reach a stopping point which should be at the cuff. And to undo the cuff, first gonna have to figure out, okay, where in the world are you sewn up? Oh yeah, I should also, I should also mention, there's gonna be some threads here and there. You want to, um, at your best, you, you want to pr do your best to preserve all the threads because you're going to need some thread later on for the sewing part of this job. Okay, so, there's two things we could do here. We could cut the cuff off and work with that. Or we could find where it's sewed on there and try to pull the threads out. I'm going to try to find where the, it's sewn and then try to pull the threads out. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll just cut the cuff. So, I'll show you that here in a minute. So, after a long and tedious time pulling each single freaking thread, um, 
what do we do now? Uh, same thing that we did before. Take one end, the cuff, pull up. Just do this all over. This is going to be a little bit tough to pull on some parts only because these are old jeans. And uh, some parts are more rigid and stuff than the other parts. Okay. And once we unpull the cuff, once we have it to where it's folded out, now we can actually source where it holds together this seam. So we're going to cut a thread and pull that thread out. I'm just going to show you guys that real quick because it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so... Grab your scissors like this and find that thread, which is right there. And hook your scissors into it and then, as quickly as you can, cut. Now, because these scissors have a nice big gap in between them, we're gonna just have to pull towards the camera right there. And do the same thing with the other side. <sighs> Alright. And then, <clears throat> this is the most time consuming part. The other loop that's next to it, you want to put the scissors in there also. Make sure you're not going into the jean itself, just the thread. Okay. Put the blade to where it's not going to cut it. And yank, and then just it like that, because this is already cut up right here. Just pull this, I believe. We may... Nah, we don't have to do that. Same thing with the other end. Boom. Okay. Now we should be able to pull apart this from that. There we go. And then pull apart the red that's the thread snapping no that's just the torn pieces okay should be able to pull apart the rest of this okay this is joined by two really thick threads uh, so we're just gonna cut one cut the other two ouch poke myself with the scissors Okay, and there we go. Now that's uncuffed. Okay, so this is this can flop out and pull the rest all the way to that crotch piece right there. And then what we're going to need to do is do the same thing that you did on that cuff side onto the um, fly right here with the three threads, so that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Since there's not a whole bunch of threads, you don't really have to worry about saving any threads. Let's see if we can just pull this apart. No, we can't. Dang it. it. Means it's going to be harder to do this. Okay. Clear all these threads out because <coughs> you can probably pull them. If they get stuck, it's not a big deal. Just cut it.
this is gonna keep on his head. He's gonna be like, huh? Oh, mommy, you don't do this stuff to me. So, you guys get the point, this is going to take a lot longer, uh, so I'm going to do this off camera. Be right back. So as you can see, this is actually a, uh, a very good width to make our haver haversack, and pretty good length right here, so you cut it off from here. So I think what I'm going to have to do, and instead of trying to preserve these pockets over here, I might just have to cut around here take the pockets off and sew them on the outside um, I'll show you that here in a minute I forgot to mention this is the part where you switch out the scissors so we're gonna set those scissors aside and use these stronger scissors that can cut a penny in half um, I don't know if they can still cut a penny in half because these are these scissors are probably older than I am so these scissors are probably like 20 years old or something like that 18 to 20 years old somewhere around there so this is how we're going to do it uh find the part that we need to cut which is about the crotch um we're going to, we're going to make sure we're cutting just underneath that pocket right there because we don't want to actually cut we don't want to actually cut the pocket because we're going to use that for later on uh, we want to salvage all things that we can. Uh, so, if we just stretch this out for a bit, we can see that we're going to need to cut right around the bottom piece of there. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll show you guys. I'll have to hold it with my knees. Okay. So, just these cut really neat and nice. So, now that we have our first starting cuts, I'll go ahead and show you the end after I cut this off. So, we've actually got an ideal piece for uh, for making a haversack. There's a couple torn ends here. So I'll use that as the end um, that folds in and the wider part as the flap. Um, so all we have to do is go up to here. And that's a nice kind of deep hiver sack. Uh, keep in mind, we're not going to need um, too much of a pocket over here because we're going to be using the pockets from here uh, for the outside pockets, which will give us much more room. Um, both of these pieces are going to fold in, so it really doesn't matter which part is top and bottom. Uh, I just realized that. So... So we want the inside to look like this, and the outside to look like that. Um, so, first thing that we need to do, because these scissors uh, aren't the sharpest scissors, uh, I'm going to go grab some scissors that are better than that, surprisingly. Uh, draw a straight line from here to here, just barely cutting off some of this excess. Uh, then after that... I'm going to go ahead and uh, fold this in here. Okay. Which look like that. And then you have one pocket <clears throat> if I move this over here. And over here we have the flap, or this will be the flap, fold over like that. Uh, we could also do it another way, which is that way, 
fold in this part like that but then again it won't have very much room so it's more roomy if we just cut this to be if we sew this like that because then it'll fit more room it's still going to be uh, a fairly large uh, haversack uh, and we can make two or we could pair both these together pair both of the legs together to make one really big one but I don't think we really need a really big one um, as for our shoulder straps uh, we can use some more jeans over here because I have a lot of them like I don't know three or four more pairs that's one, two, three, four, four more pairs uh, of pants <clears throat> to use. And I think I just got this down for uh, out of science. Um, just with uh, experimenting. This is the first try that I've tried to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and use this yardstick uh, over there and try to make a straight line. And... Uh, We'll see how this goes. Okay, so I drew a line. You can barely see it. Uh, I'm going to cut it with these guys. And also, you might be wondering what I'm going to do with this flailed out end. Well, we're just going to fold this in to where it's all even on both sides. Iron it down, bobby pin it, and uh, then sew these together. And I'll show you after I do all these things uh, what it looks like. So, turns out my Swiss Army Knife scissors worked best. We're just going to use some white string. I'm not sure what type of string this is. It, uh, 100% polyester. Okay. This is where the bobbing, bobby pins and, uh, needle comes in play. We're going to fold this over and bobby pin it down. We're also going to fold these edges over, bobby pin it down. We're just going to start sewing. Uh, accordingly um, just look up your basic sewing stuff and just use that I don't it doesn't matter what type of sewing you use I'm just gonna do that basic stuff um, it's basically this type of sewing which is what I'm gonna do on the edges all right be right back see you guys whenever it's done Okay, you guys, so I, uh, I finished up on this. I have to be extremely silent because other people are sleeping. I'll go ahead and actually sew this up real quick. And, uh, after I get done with that, I'll show you the next step. But, uh, as you can see, just used a very common stitch over here. And because that was so time-consuming, I decided to do a shorter stitch over here which is also a very common stitch. Uh, these stitches will last a while. Um, and now that all the edges are sewn together so they don't fray, uh, we'll continue with the next step after I sew this part down right there. All right, see you guys. Mm, be right back. <clears throat> okay, so now all we need to do is measure how long we want our um, our haversack to be, which we'll go ahead and fold it over. As you can see, this is actually straight now, so there's no parts of it that are folding over too much. I'm just going to dry fit this like that. Uh, now, most people would tell you to leave a whole bunch of room on this flap side because they want to make pockets uh, when the truth of the matter is that we have pockets over there that we can use and just put it on the outside or in the inside anywhere. So, uh, now all we have to worry about is how big you want your packet, your sack to be in depth. And this is about uh, 
about nine and seven eighths inch uh, deep, which is pretty good. And we're just gonna flap this flap over and see how that looks. Which looks pretty good too. Okay. So uh, now all we have to do, since we've already dry fitted it, insert your bobby pins along this edge because we already know this is straight. Okay. Uh, it doesn't take too much effort to know that if you have a straight line right here, straight straight line right here, then this is going to be straight also. Uh, so now we just bobby pin this up and sew it, and I'll show you the end of that result. So we're pretty much finished with this. Um, we've got all the edges sewn together, and it looks pretty rough, but believe me, we're going to do some trimming on these loose threads and stuff like that, that we don't really need hanging out anymore. Um... And then we're going to add on the pockets, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like after I do that. So we got that cleaned up now, looking a lot better. Uh, all we need to do is take the pockets off, and I'll show you how to take the pockets off. What we're going to do, do the same thing that we did with the legs, uh, of the pant legs. We're just going to cut these cords, and pull them out, and then pull the pocket off. And... Uh, you'll see what that looks like here in a minute. So as you guys can see, it no longer looks like a uh, the back end of a jeans. Uh, because I took the stitching off in the middle. So now we're just going to pin this and then sew it together. Um, we're going to start over here, go around, and then go back to here. And then we're going to do that type of stitching. Uh, that you saw in the back, where it basically overlaps the stitching going up. And we're going to do the same thing with this. So, let's just go ahead and pin it down. This, this type of stitching right here, see? Where it goes over this, keeps it on there better. So, just going to finish this up and see what that looks like whenever it's done. So now I've uh, sewn on the pockets, and as you can see, single stitch works perfectly fine for this. And uh, ta-da! I also, my grandmother has a bunch of these lying around. So, I think I'll use this one because it doesn't have one of those balls at the end. Probably uh, put it on here for a loop and uh, see how that works. If that doesn't work out, I might just have to use the button from the fly of the jeans. Uh, but, we'll see how this would go. Um, I would have to use a strap, so, probably from another part of the jeans. Anyway, so we'll see how this goes, and then it'll be the finished product. Okay, so you guys, I attached the button, cut the hole, sew the hole, so the flap works out great, uh, and I made the jean... Uh, one of the jean pant legs into a strap. You make sure it folds over like that and then comes around otherwise it'll bind up on you. Uh, and mark it where you want it to be at and then uh, find where the crease is over here. So now I'm going to uh, sew it and you guys will see what it looks like after that. Okay so here it is, all finished up, with the button on the flap, so I can open it and close it. I have some stuff in here already, I'll show you the contents in a different video. Straps on there, thanks for watching, please comment, rate, and subscribe if you wish. You don't have to if you don't want to. Thanks for watching again.